Just like you have for the Niger Delta, a program which will bring them out of their forest, we're trying with the premise of educating them, giving them health care, giving them peaceful life. This is how you entice people to avoid violence and militancy. But when you continue dropping bombs, in fact, petrol bombs, uh, destroying rugas, killing children and women, so they will find no sympathy and empathy on our own children. This is it. Uh, an eye for an eye. This is what is happening. So we have to change our tactics. We have to change our, uh, our style. What we have been doing has not been productive. But we, what we think is, if we can have a channel where we can have a dialogue with them, Sheikh Guni is saying that the military fighting back is provoking the terrorists. That's why they are using brute force and kidnapping more people. In other words, more attacks will come as far as the military continues to hit them hard. Therefore, he's calling for negotiations with them. This is very, very strange. How about telling them to surrender? It's very simple. Drop your arms wherever you are and leave. But he wants Nigeria to bend backwards and negotiate with terrorists. It's like telling the police to stop fighting armed robbers or criminals, that the more force they use, the more brutal the armed robbers will be. It's very unfortunate that Sheikh Gumi, an Islamic scholar who is supposed to be conservative in his social life, thought, everything, but even a leftist will shudder at some of his ideas and suggestions. It just shows one thing, he's a terrorist sympathizer. That was why he was detained and deported from Saudi Arabia in 2010. We will get back to why he was deported in a moment. If the Saudis couldn't tolerate Gumi, remember, this is the birthplace of Islam. You can't be holier than them. Never. You can't turn around to start teaching them how to be conservative in life. They deported this man, but here we are in Nigeria tolerating him. He has always made many threats against government, against Nigerians, always in the favor of terrorists. How about telling them, since he feels he knows all their grievances and why they took up arms against Nigeria, how about telling them to drop these arms and go back to their normal lives? Oh wait, they wouldn't do that because they can never make the kind of money they make doing legitimate business. That's why the Nigerian state must finish them off once and for all, so that people doing legitimate business can get back to their businesses without fear so that farmers can get back to their farms without fear, so that this high food inflation can drop. Nigerians are suffering. So many benefits from having a secure country free of terrorists. Telling terrorists to sit down and negotiate when you already know their objective. Let's even assume that their objective is not jihad or making money from ransom payments, that they are truly marginalized like many Nigerians are, that they are fighting the ills and injustice in the society just like Niger Delta militants did a few years ago. All the people they are kidnapping, are they responsible for their problems? If the government is their problem, why can't they take the fight to them? Oh, it's because they are cowards. They don't want to fight the military face to face. They want to use children as human shields. That's why they kidnap them in the first place. Wonder where they learned it from? Maybe the bombardment from the army has become so terrific. They are cornered, there's no way out. You can never negotiate with such people. People like Gumi are dangerous. Imagine all he said in that Arise TV interview. He kept blaming everyone else except the terrorists themselves. Nigerians are their victims and he's saying that victims should negotiate with aggressors. The main problem is that it doesn't seem like the authorities want this to end. Despite Gumi saying the military is using brute force, it doesn't seem like they are doing enough. Because if they were, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be hearing kidnapping every day. So the best Gumi can do is to tell them to drop their arms and embrace peace. Otherwise, the state should take the war to them. With all the new equipment, including yet to be delivered once to Nigerian military, they do not have any excuse for not finishing the job. They should deal with it with utmost urgency so that people in affected communities can go back to their normal lives. It's a pity that the defense headquarters said that Kaduna hostages are being held in areas that are difficult to reach, which proves that they are using them as human shields. Nevertheless, they should endeavor to rescue all people being held hostage across Nigeria.
Now, on why Sheikh Gumi was deported from Saudi Arabia in 2010, remember Abu Muntalab, the underworld terrorist bomber that was jailed in the United States. US authorities discovered that he exchanged emails with Sheikh Gumi, so they requested the Saudi authorities to detain him, which they did until they eventually deported him six months later. So whether Gumi knew Abu Mutalab's intentions or not, the mere fact that they were in contact raised a serious red flag. So think of this for a moment, the Saudis held him in detention for a few months because of his links to terrorism, but in Nigeria he's openly advocating for negotiations with terrorists. He has also been seen many times with them. Why does the government tolerate that? All the energy he spends being their mouthpiece advocating for negotiations. Why hasn't he spent a quarter of that time telling them to surrender or just drop their arms and disappear? No, he won't do that because he's sympathetic to their cause. It's time for the authorities to take security challenges more seriously because they are even more targeted by these guys. No country can develop in an atmosphere of insecurity. Thanks for watching.